Hi, this is Sally Morgan, physical therapist, craniosacral therapist, and Tellington T Touch practitioner for animals and people. This is Tristan, he's a corgi, and this is an episode of Conversations with a Corgi. And today we're going to talk about something that's quite topical because the heat in the country is still unbelievable throughout the southwest and the east. Uh, we had a little rain on Friday and got a little cooler at night but it is going to skyrocket in temperatures again throughout the coming week and so what to do with your dog and this is really um, important for me to talk about because when i was away this week people on the third floor of my building had no air conditioning the air conditioner was broken it was basically blowing hot air around the room and on the third floor with the sun streaming in giant floor-to-ceiling windows on that one whole wall and no other exterior windows except at the back of the apartment the place was just boiling hot and these people were staying there and they called and complained and it took i don't know the better part of their vacation you know five days to get the air conditioner finally fixed one of the electronic boards on it needed to be replaced in the meantime their dog was sick big golden retriever who thankfully because of her very lustrous coat they shave in the summer and I say thankfully in this case only because it's never a good idea to shave your dog's coat because it does help provide them with insulation both from the heat and from the cold and when you shave their hair they lose a lot of their ability to regulate their temperature so it can be really dangerous but in this case the dog would have been so hairy that that heat would have been just much more destructive for her and her coat had grown back pretty much being a golden retriever um, she still had you know a lot of her hair but the fluffies on her legs and things had been trimmed up so that was a good thing because it allowed access to the dog's bottom half and that is one of the best ways to cool your dog when he's overheated you can just soak down the bottom half of your dog from here down where there's less hair especially their stomach because they will try to lay on a nice cool floor there was a wood and tile floor in this place and the other thing you can do is dilute the water with the alcohol to try to um, improve the speed of that um, evaporation of the water now obviously if your dog licks himself a lot you don't want to put too much alcohol on him and the worst thing to do in this case would have been to take the dog in the ocean and then not hose her off because that moist heat of the bacteria in the ocean would have been terrible but they did take her swimming many times a day just to cool her down because the ocean temperature in new england is around 70 right now um, in the bay where we were uh, but then they of course sprayed her off and in fact in most cases they use soap to wash her because uh, of her longer coat so one thing you can do is indeed uh, keep the bottom half of your dog cool and keep that wet another really important thing which nobody mentioned until i met them the last day we were there is to keep the dog's ears cool because a lot of blood circulation goes to the ears if you keep the dog's ears wet especially with nice big flappy ears like a golden retriever especially moistening the outside of the ears can help your dog cool the only way that dogs can cool themselves is to do what Tristan's doing now, which is panting. They <clears throat> evaporate the water on their tongue and it allows cool air to go into their lungs and that's the way that they can cool their bodies. They have very few sweat glands throughout their whole system, unlike us. They don't have sweaty armpits like we do. So the only way a dog really can cool himself is by panting. So that's an important thing to know um, and another thing about the panting is that if your dog is overheated his tongue will get wider as the blood vessels expand trying desperately to get coolness into your dog so if you notice that your dog's tongue looks often red and if it's really bad it'll be white um, but if your dog's tongue is wider it can be a sign that he is suffering from um, being overheated another thing you can do which i highly recommend and people always forget this um, and I wish I had uh, met these women earlier to tell them to do this is to take frozen water bottles and put them under your dog like right here when he's laying down and that coolness and the evaporation of the water coming off of the uh, water bottle as it thaws can really help cool your dog down now this is a 12 year old golden retriever so in fact she's not going to be chewing on those bottles or anything she might be licking the 
the moistness off of the bottles. Um, and of course they had the windows open and there was a bit of a breeze most of those days, maybe three out of five. Um, and they certainly had plenty of fans. People like me and others had uh, donated their fans to them to help try to keep the air moving in the room, which again, the air movement is good because it improves evaporation of the water and can lower your dog's temperature. Another thing you can do if you are at home um, or if you've planned ahead is get one of those cooling pads um, for dogs to lay on. They make these cooling beds with gel in them. I think my sister even has some on her website. And those are great when your dog is in a really hot situation. Of course, you have to have enough room in your fridge or freezer to put some of the pads in. But <clears throat> for this dog, just the ones that you use in your freezer to transport food um, you know, in your cooler to and from your trip could have been used under that dog's bed or around where she was laying or even in front of a fan with the fan blowing over the ice block that can really help cool your dog. So <clears throat> these things are so important because if your dog gets overheated like that, it can be life threatening. Some of the symptoms between besides the wide tongue is, um, you know, excessive panting, uh, vomiting, lethargy, um, and things like that. So, and you'll of course know that your dog is very hot. Another good thing you can do is check the temperature at the tip of the ear. And this gives you a sense of whether your dog is hot or cold. If the tip of the ear is boiling hot, your dog is way overheated and you need to get him to a shady place and give him water. Um, if your dog looks really bad and this dog was starting to get to that point, um, you have to take them in for IV fluids. And also very important to make sure your dog is drinking enough when it's super hot like that. Um, some of the things you can do is give them chicken broth. Um, certainly at the supermarket you can buy that or beef broth for them to drink. That might be a little more appealing um, because you really want to make sure that they're drinking. And this dog I think was just so hot <laughs> that she was drinking. Um, a fair amount, but not all dogs will because they get to a point where they're too hot to even care and they feel a little nauseous. So really important um, that you keep your dog well hydrated. So make sure that's also something you do. And again, even if you don't have access to a freezer, just putting cold water from the faucet in a bowl with a fan blowing over it can help cool your dog where he is laying. And try to keep your dog on the floor. That's not gonna be so hard because heat does rise. This was sort of an A-frame apartment, so a lot of the heat was up in the top of the ceiling. Um, and if the dog, you know, this was an old girl, she needs to be comfortable, you can put a sofa cushion on the floor or something for her to lay on, but try to keep her on the ground level because that will help uh, cool her even more than her being on top of the sofa or the bed. So those are a few things that you should keep in your mind in case you're ever in a place where you're like these people and you didn't have air conditioning and it was boiling hot. And this happens to people all the time right now, especially with the demand for electricity. There have been blackouts in some buildings or um, the air conditioners have been overloaded. And so you may have gone in your fifth story apartment for a couple of days with no air conditioning. Um, so keep in mind some of these tips, the ice water bottles around your dog, ice packs, um, from your camper freezer <laughs> or your cooler and having the fan blow over them. And certainly around this time of year, you can get fans at a pretty cheap price. A lot of stores are having clearances on them. So definitely make sure you have a couple of fans in your house um, because you just don't know. I use mine actually when uh, I have uh, water leaking in the basement in the winter when the ground is frozen and it's cracking. Um, the fan will dry up pretty much everything that's coming in. So fans are really important and a lot of people I know with dogs who live in an air conditioned unit, maybe in New York City, might not even have a fan. So make sure you've got one because when you're in an emergency, it may be hard to get one. And <clears throat> um, if your air conditioning unit in your building goes kafui, you need a fan to keep you and your dog cool, a couple of them. So wet the ears, wet the bottom. You can use alcohol on the bottom and try to keep your dog cool. We have some really dangerous heat again this coming week. So those are a few tips for helping your dog survive no air conditioner for a week if that happens to you when you're on vacation or in your house. Look at all these people I haven't seen before. Donna, Angel, I need to learn how to type. I think your typing looks fine. <laughs>
we all have trouble typing because you know if you learned how to type the old way with your fingers on an actual keyboard and now you're typing on your phone not that similar and some people it takes a long time to change to one finger typing when you've been using 10 fingers so i'm sympathetic <laughs> so tomorrow we'll be at our jobs as educators yeah your corgi likes the vents Corgis being orange dogs, like golden retrievers, they are hot dogs in oriental medicine and Chinese medicine theory, so they are prone to be more hot. Ugh, you're stinky. I think you need a bath. <laughs> so if your dog is orange, even more important to monitor his temperature. So we will be back on Tuesday for another episode of Conversations with a Corgi. Um, uh, we'll be at our job as educators Monday and Wednesday. Uh, so we'll be back Tuesday, Wednesday, or Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. Saturday we return to the beach and we will do some more Facebook lives from the beach. I'm hoping to do another episode with the dogs playing in the surf there. It's so wonderful to watch the joyful dogs playing. So um, I always try to do a live there. We have pretty good Wi-Fi there. I could usually get some of it especially if i put the hot spot on so we will see you on tuesday everybody have a great couple of days keep you and your dogs cool thanks for joining us